Okay, I'm back. Um, so my Duffy FYB, it's not, <coughs> it's very rare, but it also is mild. It's generally seen as being mild. Um, I got my second blood test, so it was an eight. And then when I arrived to Australia, I had my, my next blood test last week when I was 32 weeks pregnant. And she rang me, Julie rang me and said, oh, your tidal level is now 16. So the universal critical number for titers uh, is 16. So that is a number where it's like, all right, now this is when the mother's antibodies are really starting to affect the baby and the antibodies are getting strong. So then you basically have to find out if the baby carries the antigen. If the baby does carry the, the antigen the same way Poet did, she carried the antigen and obviously one of my other children had it too, um, then she can become quite anemic because my the only job that my antibodies has is to attack the red blood cells of the baby. So the first course of action is getting a blood test, which I'm getting on Monday, to see if the baby carries the antigen. Now, if she doesn't, she's fine. There's not going to be any issue. I can have my home birth. I can just, she can come when she wants to come. And that would be great. I have the mummy instinct uh, that she does have it. And there are a few reasons why I think that. But basically when I found out that the level was 16, I also did a bunch of reading. And in Australia, for whatever reason, the critical titer is actually 32. So it would have to double again. So the MFMs, which are called uh, maternal fetal medicine, they're the specialists, I have two on my case here in Australia who are working together. Um, they don't seem that worried about it. They're quite relaxed about it. You know, obviously they want me to have the scans, but they're not as nervous as probably I am. Um, I also belong to this amazing Facebook group and antibody support group, and I've been reading and learning so much. And I think even though I'm getting quite obsessed with it, I... <coughs> I think it's such a blessing because really when you have such a rare thing as aloe immunization, not everyone is aware of the intricacies of it. Um, and so you as the mother and as the parents, the baby, you really have to advocate for your baby and learn as much as you can. So I have been devouring um, this amazing website called allaboutantibodies.com. And um, also just, I'm a part of this Facebook group. So I'm learning, I'm hearing from other women, I'm asking questions and they will give their advice. What I've found from reading about it is that no matter what your titer is, if you have a sensitized pregnancy, your baby should come out. Uh, they, they recommend delivery between 37 and 38 weeks. So... That's the, the, the sort of global recommendation is, is baby is safer outside of the womb once they hit 37 weeks than to stay in the womb for a few extra weeks. Um, you know, that was quite confronting to read for me because in case this is my last pregnancy, God willing, it's not. But in case it is, I was really excited to have a home birth and just to let her come in her own time, not have any sort of inductions. Um, just really enjoy her being in there in case this is my last pregnancy. Um, so it's thrown a bit of a spanner in the works, but of course I err on the side of caution. I think I'm getting pulled in a few different directions. I think I'm wanting to lean into the relaxed nature of my doctors here in Australia, but I also know that because the, the tighter number in Australia is a different tighter number that that's deemed as critical than the rest of the world, the UK and the US, I just like, I'm a bit confused as to why it's not just 16 worldwide is known as the critical number. So I'm sort of sitting in a place of thinking I'm already at a critical point. We had what's called an MCA scan, which is where you scan the baby's, um, the blood flow going into the brain and just checking baby, <coughs> checking baby out. 
<coughs> and then you get a certain number which tells you um, if the baby's getting anemic. So that is the main issue when you have a sensitized pregnancy is that the baby can get, get anemic because the mummy's body or the antibodies are attacking the baby's red blood cells. So she's not anemic. She is not anemic yet. I have a number, uh, the, the universal number of anemia in babies, um, they call it the MOM number, mom number is 1.5. And I am 1.37 currently. That number can go up. Um, I She's closer to being anemic than not being anemic. So there was a graph that shows where sort of the median MON number, MOM number is. And then there's the, um, the line which says, all right, baby's anemic here. She was closer to the anemic line, which to me, informs me that she probably does carry the antigen. However, the blood test takes three weeks to come back to confirm if she has it or not. So I would like to just keep moving forward as though she has it. Um, and that means it just entails more scans, so more MCA scans. Um, I think my doctor here said every three weeks or every two weeks, um, but I checked in with my doctor in the US and he was like, you should be having weekly scans, which is um, the information I've got from my Facebook group as well and the All of Our Antibodies website, is that it should really be more like weekly scans once you hit the critical titer of 16. So I'm just really trying to advocate for her and I'm happy to pay every week to have the scans just to make sure she's not getting anemic because if she does start to show signs of anemia and she gets over that 1.5, then there's this thing called an IUT, which is an interuterine uh, transfusion. So she could get a blood transfusion in utero, which at the gestation I'm at now, which is 33 plus four, they say generally if you're over 34 weeks, it's actually just safer for the baby to deliver, to be delivered, um, rather than go through an IUT. So, look, it's not news that I wanted to have, and I, it was a bit <coughs> confronting. Mark and I had a day where we just yelled at each other all day, I think, because we were both so stressed out. And it's changed things a lot for us. It's changed sort of how we saw our birth, it's changed what happens to the baby <coughs> after birth because she's going to need to go to neonates to get um, her blood tested. So um, she just needs to have all her levels tested to make sure that she's not anemic. And if she is, maybe she has to go under the lights and what sort of therapy she might need. Um, but... I'm cautiously optimistic and I'm hoping that this is as high as my number will get and hopefully it'll drop back down again before delivery. But either way, I'm feeling like I've broken up with the idea of having this dream home birth and that I'm leaning into like what is most important. The most important thing is having a healthy, beautiful, amazing baby who is safe and if my environment isn't going to make her the safest. I am happy to have, if I need to, have a preterm baby <coughs> or an early term baby, which is, you know, 36, 37 weeks. Um, we've picked an induction date. So it's between the 37 and 38 week um, induction uh, gestation. And so the other sort of complicated element of this is that Mark is leaving to go back to America. He is leaving to take Isaac back. It's the only option we have because of COVID. No one can get exemptions to leave Australia and to enter back into Australia unless you're basically Australian. Um, but Aussies, Aussies can't leave Australia. They can come back in. So an American needs to leave, but then be able to get back in. They'd have to be an Australian resident. So we can't even get a babysitter to do it. And Mark is like the only person that fits under all the criteria. So he's American. So he's able to leave America to get back to a home in America. 
then he can turn around the next day and come back into Australia because he's an Australian resident and then quarantine, do hotel quarantine for two weeks. So it's sort of, we're sort of in this gray zone where he's leaving on the 21st or the 22nd of July. And if my scans show that she's anemic, they're going to pull her out. They're going to say, all right, she's coming out. Uh, and Mark will be away. He won't be there. He will not be out or he'll be stuck in quarantine and he won't be able to be at the birth. So it's been a pretty emotional, challenging week, just navigating all the differences, everything that's just radically shifted and we weren't expecting it. And it's such a good lesson in, in you know, the four agreements is one of my favorite books, like just like liberating yourself from expectations. All I, I guess my only expectation is to have a healthy baby. I don't care how she gets here or when she gets here. I just want her to be healthy. So whatever I need to do, and even if that means Mark misses the birth because <coughs> he's in America, that's what's going to happen. And I have other amazing, beautiful best friends, uh, my mom and Bodhi, who really wants to be at the birth, able to sort of step in and, and come and, and be at the birth. The other thing about um, taking home birth off the table means that I do only get to have two other people in the room with me because of COVID uh, protocols at the birth center. So I can get, I can be induced, not with Syntocin slash Pitocin. I can just have my waters broken, which is what happened last time. The plan now is to have my waters broken basically the day after Mark gets out of quarantine and I'll be almost 38 weeks by then, um, but still in that sort of safe zone of 37 to 38 weeks and um, have my waters broken at the birth center, come back home to our property, labor here at the, at the house. I'm guessing it's not going to take, I'm guessing it's not going to be just a four hour birth because if she's not fully cooked, it might take a bit longer to get labor going, um, but I'll be very diligent and try and make sure I get in the car with plenty of time. And still the kids and my mom and my friends can be with me here at the house laboring. And then Mark and probably one of my best friends, Kat, who acts as my doula, uh, will come in the car with me and go to the birth center and birth the baby. And hopefully I still get to have a water birth and they'll check her afterwards. We may have to stay in for a night if they're doing checks on her, but Hopefully not. Hopefully she'll be a good birth weight. Um, the other thing I should mention is that she was in the 50th percentile at my 29 week scan and then at my 32 week scan, which was done just now, the MCA scan to check on her anemia, she had dropped down to the 17th percentile. So <coughs> she's also like <coughs> not, and I've never had a baby that size. I've always been like the 80th percentile. Um, and that for me is just another little red flag that maybe she does have the antigen and she is being affected by the antibodies. Um, but look, that's just mummy intuition. I could be off. I, maybe she's perfectly fine and she's just a smaller baby for whatever reason. Um, trying not to worry, just like being super diligent with my kick counts. And um, yeah, okay. So that's the big major update. <laughs> Sorry, this is so long. Uh, so birth plans changing don't know when she's going to be born probably will not get past 38 weeks um could be any time between you know 34 weeks next week and 38 weeks um but i'm i think in my head she'll be fine she won't be anemic and i'll be able to sort of deliver with this water being broken around 37 and a half weeks so fingers crossed um also Oh, it's not on me anymore. My Apple Watch, I'm obsessed with. I've become obsessed with. Guys, help me. Closing my rings every day, my move ring, my exercise ring, and my standing ring. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Um, but that's been really fun. So I've been exercising every single day, going to F45, or I run around the property, and I hike up the hills. And um, it's just been so great. It feels amazing to work out. Eating healthy still, not as healthy as I probably was eating last week. Um, went to vegan a vegan festival today and ate a lot of donuts. Um, but it was really fun. So I'm out of time again for my second video. 
But thank you guys. I really appreciate all of you and I'm sending you love.